All right, so this video is going to be dealing with chapter 22, section 2, which has to do with hydrocarbons. And first we have to start off, hydrocarbons, as we discussed last video, are compounds made solely of carbon and hydrogen. And as a brief definition, a saturated hydrocarbon is said to be a hydrocarbon which uh, only contains single covalent bonds. So for example, this would be uh, ethane, a saturated hydrocarbon, but if these uh, carbons were to have a double bond, then this would be unsaturated. So in other words, for a hydrocarbon to be called saturated, you have to have all single covalent bonds. All right, so the first type of hydrocarbon we're going to be looking at in this video are what are known as alkanes. And alkanes are basically saturated hydrocarbons with only single bonds. So the simplest three are probably methane, ethane, and propane. And all the alkanes are going to have this prefix in the case of meth, eth, and prop, followed by the suffix ane. Now, uh, you'll notice that to go from ethane to propane, all you have to do is add a CH2 group. In the case, you just add one right here. When you go on to butane, you add another CH2 group in the middle of the chain, and so on. So, uh, the alkanes are what are known as a homologous series. And now, a homologous series is just a compound in which you get the next compound by adding a uh, constant group. In this case, that constant group is the CH2 group. So to know all the elements in a homologous series, you don't have to memorize their formulas individually. For example, you know, the CH4, the C2, H6, the C3, uh, H8, etc. All you have to do is memorize the formula for the group. In this case, that formula is C to the N, H to the 2N plus 2, which makes sense because uh, each carbon has two associated hydrogens, and then the ones on the end each have an extra hydrogen. And from this formula, you can determine uh, the formula for any compound in that series. You know, you could do C30 and get uh, C30 is C30, H62, etc. Moving on now, the next type of hydrocarbon we're going to be discussing are what are known as cycloalkanes. And these are basically just alkanes with carbon arranged in a ring or cyclic structure. So here we have what is known as cyclopentane. And just to break down that name a little bit, pent mean, is the prefix for five, ane means that it's a alkane, and cyclo just means that it's arranged in a ring. So you can draw that either with our normal structural diagram or a skeletal diagram. And basically, if you draw you know, your pentagon, uh, probably better than that, uh, chemists will know that each of these corners is a carbon atom saturated with uh, the two necessary hydrogen atoms to complete its four bonds. And the general formula for cycloalkanes is C to the N, H to the 2N. Because each carbon will have two associated hydrogens, and unlike regular alkanes, there's no end where, you know, you have to have that extra carbon on either end of the compound. So there's no plus two, it's just C, N, H, 2, N. Moving on now, we're going to be getting into the tricky business of naming alkanes. And the first thing you have to do is go to page 718 in your book, especially if you can't read this chart up here, uh, which basically lists uh, the carbon atom chain prefixes going from meth all the way to deck. And we're not going to be looking at anything with more than 10 carbons. So don't worry about that. Now, uh, naming hydrocarbons, alkanes that don't have branches, in other words, are just a straight line, so you don't have, you know, a CH3 group poking up there. If you just have what is known as an unbranched alkane, you simply count the number of 
carbons, in this case you have one, two, three, four, five carbons, you go to the chart and look up the prefix, in this case that prefix is pent, and then you add the suffix ain, because it's an alkane. And this is the simplest nomenclature we're going to be looking at. All right, now we're going to get into the complicated process of naming a branch chain alkane. And the first thing we have to do is know about alkyl groups. Now, alkyl groups are exactly what I have defined here. Basically, they're groups of atoms formed when hydrogen is removed from an alkane. So, for example, when you remove the hydrogen that used to be over there, you get, instead of methane, you get what is known as a methyl group. Likewise, when you remove the hydrogen from ethane, you get an ethyl group. And if you look at the compound we have up here, very clearly you have this dominant chain and then you have a methyl group, another methyl group, etc. Now to name the actual alkane, as is our goal, the first thing you have to do is locate what is known as the parent chain. And now the parent chain is the longest chain with straight methyl groups. And what I mean by that is basically this right here can't be the parent chain because if you look the methyl group that comes out of it uh, has a methyl or the ethyl group that comes out of it has a methyl group coming off of it. So you have to look at the longest continuous string of carbons that have uh, only straight lines coming off of them. In that case, it would be with this bend right here. So the parent chain actually can have a bend in it depending on how it's drawn. Because you could really draw these lines bending any which way you wanted. Um, but what you have to realize is that this is the parent chain because it has a straight group coming off of it, straight group, straight group, and straight group. And then, once you've identified the parent chain, you count the number of hydrogens, or not hydrogens, uh, carbons that are in that chain. In this case, you have three, six, seven, eight. So it's going to be an octane compound. The next thing you want to do, once you've identified your main chain, is find the actual groups coming off of it. In this case, we have methyl groups and one ethyl group. Now, in front of the name, you insert your, uh, your alkyl groups in alphabetical order. So in this case, because we have an ethyl group, that comes first. You have ethyl, and then you have ethyl methyl octane. Now from here, you have to identify how much of each group you have, because you have one ethyl, you have no prefix. You can just skip that. Um, but because we have three methyl groups, we have to modify this name so that it's ethyl trimethyl octane. The last thing you have to indicate is where the groups actually attach. For example, because we have trimethyl groups, that just tells us that we have three methyl groups in the compound that could come off here or here, but we have to indicate that they come off at these three particular spots. And the way you do that is by numbering your carbons. And there's two ways to number. You could either come down this way, starting with one, two, three, etc., or you can come up this way, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And this is the correct way to number it because what you want to do is make the uh, numbers as low as possible. Basically, you want to number it so that the groups are as close to the leading carbon, either this one or this one as possible. So you start out with this one as the one carbon at the origin. From there, all you do is throw in the numbers before each group. So for the ethyl group, it attaches at carbon number three, and for the trimethyl group, uh, you separate these with a hyphen, by the way, just for proper uh, syntax. For the three methyl groups, they attach at 2, 4, 
and 5. So the name of this compound up here is 3-ethyl-2,4,5-trimethyl octane. The last thing we're going to be looking at in this video are the properties and uses of alkanes. And what you have to realize is that the main intermolecular force that governs alkanes uh, is what is known as the London dispersion force, which we talked about earlier in this video series uh, pertaining to intermolecular forces. But what you have to realize is that the London dispersion force increases as you add mass. So, uh, the London dispersion force, which basically holds the molecules together, uh, gradually increases, if you have the force and the mass, it gradually increases as you increase the mass of molecules. So, it doesn't take very much energy to create a gas out of a low mass molecule, but out of a high mass molecule it'll take a lot more to you know, melt it and then boil it. So, what you find is that alkanes, as they increase mass, tend to go from gas to liquid to solid, that is at standard temperature and pressure. So, you know, you'll find methane is a gas we find in natural gas, along with ethane and propane, butane, those are all gases at normal room temperature. However, uh, as you move up, octane is a liquid, and this is what you'll find in gas, though it will rapidly evaporate. And when you get into the higher alkanes, you know, like something like C30, where you have, you know, a lot of mass going on, uh, you get solids, and this is what makes up something like paraffin wax in candles. In the next video we'll be covering naming nomenclature for unsaturated hydrocarbons as well as their properties.